So now, since we're about three months away from the official launch of the next generation iPhones. So for this video, let's go over all the leaks and rumors that are likely to come true for these upcoming phones. Starting off with its final design, this year on July 1st, we actually saw the final render leaks confirming the square-like camera bump in the back. These CAD images, the leaks also show that the front notch is still going to be there. And both the 11 and the 11 Max as well as the 11R, these CAD images, if you look closely, you can also see the screen size. Which these are the same screen size that are found on the 10s, 10s Max, and the 10R. So the screen size dimension didn't really change. Now Wall Street Journal did reported that these two screens, the 6.1 and the 6.5, is still going to be an OLED display. Which means that this new 11R is still going to have an LCD screen. No word if it's going to have a higher resolution display though. Now some may say that this design is hideous, it's ugly. Me and others, I'm sure, we really don't care. As long as it works, that's all I care. I could care less about what others think. If this new camera layout performs well, functions right, outperforms the rest, it's good by my books. And after seeing a bunch of leaks and renders, I'm starting to grow into this look, so I'm sure eventually everybody else will slowly adapt to it. Because if you recall, everybody did the exact same thing when we got the 10. Also, don't forget, the upcoming Google Pixel phone has already leaked and already been teased by Google themselves that this is going to be the new look for their next flagship phone. This odd camera setup had to be done because it just simply All of this just works. So that must be why they went with this layout then the similar layout like what Samsung did on their latest S10 phones. And then cases for this phone, it's already in production. Many YouTubers like Everything Apple Pro and also Zone of Tech, one of my favorite YouTubers. These guys already got their hands on on these cases. And there's actually case manufacturers actually producing these cases you can actually buy right now. So since we're little less than three months out when the official launch now, this has to be the official look for these upcoming next generation phones. Then another interesting leak that leaked out regarding the launch date for the 2019 iPhones. An official Verizon marketing calendar launch date sheet got leaked. And this leak doesn't just show the iPhone leak, it also shows other phones like the Pixel and the Samsung Note 10. And taking a closer look at the iPhone leak, there's no exact number. And honestly, I think this leak is useless because there's no exact date, there's no numbers. I don't know why this sheet was being shared all over the internet confirming the release date. It's really useless, but if we backtrack from what we've seen in the past by Apple, Apple always follows a very similar launch date. And according to TechRadar, quote, having analyzed the previous Apple events, we predict that the iPhone 11 launch date will be on Tuesday, September 10th of 2019. And that is very likely to happen. So make sure to mark those days on your calendar. And then the following Monday after that keynote, expect iOS 13 to finally be available somewhere between the 9th and the 17th. And real quick, taking a closer look at the case certified images, if you look at the 11R, the camera is also going to get the same treatment, boxy size treatment for the cameras, but is only going to have a dual camera setup. With that much space, it's possible that we'll be seeing a optical image stabilization for both of those cameras. That's just my theory that hasn't been leaked or anything like that, but that's what I think might possibly happen because that's too much space to miss out on an awesome opportunity. And of course, alongside the back, another new redesign is the new mute button. Kind of like what we saw with the first generation iPhones. Another new change is said there's going to be a new frost-like texture in the back to give us a more grippier feel. And the glass that goes on the back is actually going to be a part of the camera bump. So it's going to be an all-in-one piece, which might lead to a more expensive repair cost if you would accidentally shatter this. Michiko, a well-known, very trustworthy analytist for its many accurate reports, has reported that the new 2019 iPhones is going to feature a larger battery to accommodate the bilateral wireless charging. This is a very similar feature what we saw with Samsung do on their phones. So this means these 2019 iPhones will allow you to wirelessly charge your AirPods, other devices that support Qi charging, and this could also possibly charge the next series Apple Watch, the Series 5, which is expected to also get launched alongside with the iPhone 11s. 
but I really don't think this will be likely to ever happen because the Apple Watch charges with its own Pacific dock. But again, unless they make the Series 5 somehow compatible to also be supportive to be charged on a key charger, this might be possible, but there has been no leaks or reports of this ever happening, so we still don't know. And then according to multiple sources, Face ID will also be improved for the iPhone 11s. This new upcoming Face ID technology is said to be able to work from wider angles. Hopefully this means your phone will automatically be able to detect and read your face if you have your phone flat on the table. Those that use Face ID should understand the struggles of having to lift your phone off the table just for that phone to read your face. It's times like this I do technically miss uh, fingerprint touch ID instead. Then when it comes to the USB-C replacing the outdated lightning port, this is very unlikely to come for this 2019 iPhones. As so far there hasn't been anything confirming or supporting that this will likely happen, so we're still going to be most likely stuck using the standard lightning port adapter that we all hate because over time, it breaks really easy. And these damn cables ain't cheap. So it's just the backside of the new iPhone 11 that we're going to go ahead and see a new look. From the front, everything is going to look possibly the same, maybe thinner bezels, but I mean like from a distance, it will look like your standard iPhone 10 or newer. On the front, it looks like it's still going to have the same notch on top and will look very similar to like the current phones with Face ID. Apart from spec leaks, there hasn't been any major reports or anything about the new processor chipset that Apple is going to put on this one. Of course, it's expected that we're going to go ahead and get the new A13 chip. But Apple has always done an excellent job on keeping that locked down very well from being leaked out. But once again, it's guaranteed that it's going to be more faster, powerful, a really good strong processor that we have yet seen. And with those new cameras, it will definitely need it. Hopefully we should also see a new real-time render when taking photos. No need to wait for the processor to process the image after you already went ahead and took the shot. And I think personally, I think this is something that will highly likely happen because especially after the recent update of iOS 13 beta 3, the iPhone XS, the XS Max, and I also believe the XR can also now render your eyes in real time when FaceTiming. This is a new feature that Apple integrated without even saying anything that's currently available right now for beta 3, where when this is enabled and you're FaceTiming with somebody, your eyes will always make eye contact to the person you're talking to for a more natural chat. This is really creepy but really cool and I would imagine definitely does make having a friendly FaceTime conversation feel a lot more natural. And for those wondering if we're going to go ahead and get 5G for the 2019 iPhones, it's unlikely. It's not going to come this year. Many reports and analysts have been saying that it's currently in the works to be for the iPhone 2020, but Kudo and many other trusted analytics reporters all have been saying that they're going to hold it right now until the 2020 iPhones. And then when it comes to pricing, the starting price for these newer iPhones, we still have no idea. Many reporters have been claiming that the cost will continue over to the iPhone 11. So the current cost is, so that said, like the iPhone 11 is set to start at $1,000 for the 128 gigabyte version, while the 256 gigabyte and the 512 gigabyte version should hit store shelves at $1,100 and possibly $1,200. And then the iPhone 11 Plus is likely to start at $1,100 for the 126 gigabyte model and set you back $1,200 and 1300 for the 256 gigs and the 512. As for the 11R, we expect it to cost around 750 for the base model. According from Tech Radar, and many other sources have been reporting the same price. But I wouldn't really be surprised if we see an increase of about $100. So I wouldn't really rely on these numbers, especially what we've seen with the market the past few months. And now when it comes to color options, there wasn't any major leaks or anything reporting about a new color being added for the 11 or the 11 Max, but we did however see a new color options available for possibly the 11 R. Earlier this year, some may recall that we actually got leaked images that tweeted by Mark Garman that somebody actually managed to sneak out parts of the back glass of these newer iPhones 
showing us the new color options that's going to be replacing the 10R blue and peach colors. It's going to get replaced with a new purple and lime looking green. I kind of like these two colors. But other than that, that's basically all the important things that we know so far about the new 2019 iPhones. What do you guys think? Looking at the back glass images, will the new 11R really have a matte like texture frost glass? Or will this only be available for the 11 and the 11 Max? Or both? Because it's really hard to tell from this image, although it does look somewhat matte, but it also looks somewhat glossy. Let's hear your thoughts as well. Anyway folks, that's basically it. I'll be sure to link all the sources in the video description down below if you guys want to find out more. But this is where I'm going to go ahead and end this video. Remember if you enjoyed, like, subscribe if you want to see more. And once again, thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.